baby. It is the Matt Blaze Show. I am Matt Blaze. It is the end of October of 2020. We are still in the middle of a pandemic. In the United States here, we have an election coming up in less than a week. Or I should say a week from now. We'll be in the midst of craziness. It's already crazy. But I got a lot I want to talk about. A lot of stuff in the news that I want to talk about. A lot of stuff with Michael Jackson that I want to get to. I know a lot of people are interested. It's been a while since I've talked about Michael Jackson. But there has been some uh, information out there. There's some developments in the Michael Jackson stories about Neverland and Wade Robson and James Safechuck that I want to talk about. Get my take on these things. Because once again... The lies, the lies, the lies. More and more lies and nonsense going on. But first, before we get to the lies and the nonsense, let's talk about the good thing. Good thing that happened. With the lawsuit. Dismissed. James Safechuck, one of the accusers in Leaving Neverland, his lawsuit has now been dismissed by the L.A. Superior Court. That's what we like to hear. That's justice. Because what happened, if you haven't heard, the lawsuit that he filed back in 2013 was dismissed in 2017. Then it got revived when the governor of California signed a new law giving those who allege childhood sexual abuse more time to file lawsuits. But guess what? Thrown out again, safe Chuck. So I'm going to read to you the story. A judge has dismissed the lawsuit of one of two men who alleged that Michael Jackson abused them as boys in the HBO documentary Leaving Neverland. Los Angeles County Superior Court Judge Mark A. Young found that James Safechuck could not sue the two corporations Jackson owned that are named as defendants in the lawsuit, MJJ Productions and MJJ Ventures, Inc. Young said Safechuck's lawsuit had not demonstrated that he had had a relationship with the corporations that would have required them to protect him from Jackson. Now remember, this case is not about whether He was abused or not. That's not what this case is about. This is what this case is about. I'm going to break it down for you. This case was saying, did the companies have a responsibility to protect James Safechuck from the predator like they like to make him out to be, Michael Jackson? We all know Michael Jackson was no predator. And the judge said no. And the judge said it because I'm going to tell you why he said it, how he came to this conclusion. Because MJJ Productions Incorporated and MJJ Ventures Incorporated is Michael Jackson. That's it. Michael Jackson is the head and the boss of the company. And really, he is the company. So there's no one that can discipline the head of the company. No one. So they go, this is nonsense because the company is just Michael Jackson and there's no one to discipline the head of the company. So no, this is just a way for you to try to get more money because you try to sue Michael Jackson's estate because the guy is dead. Then you go after his companies and they go, well, Michael Jackson was the companies. So you can't do that. Denied. So save Chuck. Bye-bye. See ya. See ya. Bye-bye. Now, he could appeal this, I guess. I don't know if there's an appeal process for this or not, or this is just done. Now, Wade Robson, the other schmuck, his case is going to be in June. Once again, same thing is going to happen. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, Wade. Now, remember when they announced this law, 
Wade was like, yeah, 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 we got him. Yeah, we got him. He was like, like going out of court because they filed right away. Oh, yeah, we got him. No, Wade. You ain't got nothing. You got nothing, Wade. Nothing. You don't deserve anything. You got nothing. You're a liar. You're still a liar. You'll always be a liar. You'll always be a bum. That's it. That's all you are is a leech. A leech, Wade Robson. That's all you are. You lied repeatedly. Here's the guy who wants us to believe now, right? Now that he was lying on the stand in 2005. Because on the stand in a court of law, after he was repeatedly grilled by investigators hired by Michael Jackson's attorneys, by the way, not his attorneys themselves, investigators hired by the attorneys to grill Wade Robson to make sure there were no holes whatsoever in the story that Michael never touched him. To make sure. These are experts at this. Experts at finding lies found nothing. That's why they put him on the stand. Then you have the judge. Then you have the prosecutors. Then you have jury. You're in a courtroom. This is not like you lied to your dad about stealing his beer out of his fridge. This is in a court of law with a lot of people with all eyes on you. There is no way you're going to convince me that 22-year-old Wade Robson fooled everyone in court. And now, all these years later, after Michael Jackson is dead, he claims, oh, I was abused. Uh, I was scared back then and I didn't, I was lying in court. I perjured myself in court. And now when I have no money and I'm totally blacklisted as being a choreographer. Now when it's convenient, I'm claiming that Michael Jackson abused me. We don't buy it. Nobody with half a brain buys it. You know who buys this nonsense is people that want to believe that Michael Jackson was a pedophile. They want to believe it. So they just buy it. Which is sad. It's sad commentary on how people act. It's envy and jealousy of celebrities. That's all it is. Envy and jealousy. I don't buy it. I never bought it. So Wade, you're next. You're not, your turn is going to come up. And your lawsuits could be chucked right out of there too. No question in my mind. It's because it's the same thing. Trying to sue the companies? Not happening. Not happening. All it's about is money. Same guy after Michael died wanted to choreograph these Cirque du Soleil. Even lied about it. Said he was about to start doing it. Lied about it. Everybody who knows this guy all said he was always a schemer, always trying to scheme, always lying. Now here he is once again lying. And the fact of the matter is Michael Jackson is dead. It's a he said, he said thing. But one of those guys is dead. That's why these two idiots can go on and say whatever they want. And this douche Dan Reed the guy who produced, directed this Leaving Neverland, puts it out there. He's just as bad, if not worse. Because this guy doesn't even make the documentary showing both sides. He doesn't show both sides. Let me show you something else that he, that, 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 with this guy. He likes to claim he's a documentary, that he made a documentary about these two. He's a journalist, he says, right? Let me show you something. Let me show you the, the journalist. Look at this. There he is. There's Wade Robson all the way on the left, James Safechuck on the right, Dan Reed in the middle. Who makes a documentary and then takes a photo shoot, takes pictures with the two guys? Who does that? And look at Wade Robson with a smirk on his face. He's got a smirk on his face. Look at this. Unbelievable, this guy. Here, let me show you another picture of these two. These three, I should say, idiots. Look at this. Yeah, photo shoot. It's a photo shoot. Why would you do a photo shoot? Dan Reed, who claimed 
that the documentary wasn't about Michael Jackson, wasn't about Neverland, wasn't even about these two guys. It's about sexual abuse survivors. That's what he claimed. That's what he claimed. Meanwhile, it's called Leaving Neverland. It's all about Michael Jackson. Claims it wasn't about Michael Jackson. It's about sexual abuse survivors. Well, how come there's no other sexual abuse survivors in the documentary? The entire thing is about Wade Robson, James Safechuck, and Michael Jackson. Wouldn't a documentary about sexual abuse survivors have more than just these two in it? Look at Wade Robson. Look at that smirk on his face. How disgusting. Look at the smirk. Got a smirk on his face. Seriously, look at this. Let me zoom in. The smirk on his face. Loves the fact that he's in the limelight. Doesn't even care. Doesn't care who he destroys. Doesn't care that he's destroying the legacy of Michael Jackson. Could care less. All he wants is a payday, this guy. That's all he cares about is the payday. Could care less about anything else. Just wants his money. Look at Dan Reed smirking. Using the name of Michael Jackson to do a bogus hit piece. Disguised as a documentary. I'm not fooled. You're not fooled by this garbage. How come nobody else is in it? No other stories about sexual abuse are in this thing. None. Not one. Not one. It's the words of these two guys. That's it. There's no fact. No facts whatsoever. No facts. But he wants to claim it's about sexual abuse. Hey, 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 Dan Reed. Hey, Dan. Why didn't you have something about, I don't know, a boy from the Catholic Church that was abused by a priest? Why didn't you have that in the documentary? How about you didn't have any boys from the Boy Scouts of America that were abused by a scoutmaster in the documentary? How come you didn't have that? How come you didn't have a story of a girl that was sexually abused by a family friend or even worse, a relative? Horrible things. All of them is horrible. Every single one of these situations is horrible. And stories that can be verified and proven. But no, you wanted to make a name for yourself off of Michael Jackson. That's why the entire thing is about Wade Robson, James Safechuck, Michael Jackson, and you called it Leaving Neverland. And you try to disguise it as a documentary, as I put it in air quotes, documentary. Total and utter nonsense. Nonsense. And the fact that people out there today still believe in your nonsense, you should be ashamed how you can sleep at night, look in the mirror. All three of you should be ashamed of yourselves that you're doing this to a man's legacy, greatest entertainer that ever lived. Dragging his name through the mud repeatedly because you want money. And Dan Reed likes to say, well, I didn't pay uh, Wade Robson or James Safe Truck any money. I didn't pay them anything. They didn't get paid for this. Dude, what do you think it's doing? It's in the public. People are outraged. And because people don't really think straight or they're so worried about what it's going to do to their bottom line, you had radio stations banning Michael Jackson's music. The Simpsons creators, those idiots get on board and, oh, we have to take out the, 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 the episode where Michael voiced one episode of The Simpsons. They throw themselves in the mix like they have something to do with it. All because you want notoriety, fame, and money. That's all this was about. And now, the other story that came out is that Dan Reed is shooting a sequel to Leaving Neverland. A sequel. Like, we need that. 
More lies. More lies. But it's not happening easily. So this is from Deadline. Dan Reed is embroiled in a legal wrangle with Michael Jackson's legacy companies as he attempts to shoot a sequel to his explosive Emmy-winning Channel 4 HBO documentary. They gave this guy an Emmy for this garbage. And how they even call it a documentary is beyond me. It's a hit job. It's one-sided. A documentary that's he said, he said, there's two sides. And when you only go to one side and take everything they say as absolute fact is nonsense. That's not a real documentary. You didn't go to anybody. On Michael Jackson's side. Not one person. And when Pierce Morgan asked him about it, he goes, well, Michael Jackson's dead. I mean, nobody else was there. The the family, they're just going to say that he didn't do it. So what's the point? What's the point? You you want me to believe, you want everybody else to believe that there was nobody else around that would ever saw anything. I mean, it's amazing that the other kids that were around Michael Jackson that were famous right? Like Macaulay Culkin, Corey Feldman, other famous kids all said nothing ever happened. I never saw anything. I never saw Michael act inappropriately with anyone. But the kids that have nothing, that have no money, oh, they were abused. Ah, Michael touched me. And there's ridiculous stories that were told in Neverland. I mean, just ridiculous. You had these guys talking. He go, they go, was it safe, Chuck? He goes, yeah, like, I was like eight years old, and Michael and I, we were going to get married. We talked about we were going to be married, and we were in a relationship. We were in this loving, romantic relationship, and we talked about marriage, and we were holding each other's hands. Are you kidding me? Are you out of your mind? What seven, eight, nine-year-old would ever think anything that they're in a romantic relationship and going to marry another person at eight years old? Like, who would think that at all? I was eight years old playing with Matchbox cars and Star Wars figures. What kid would ever think like that? Because he wasn't, he wasn't talking about like, As an adult, this is his interpretation, looking back on it, of what I think now as an adult, he was saying when he, this is what he was thinking as a seven-year-old. That's nonsense. That's him thinking of it as an adult and trying to show people what he was feeling as a child and how he was so scarred. Get out of here with that. Are you kidding me? Who can believe that? It's so crazy. Kids don't think like that. I talked about this a year ago. When they talk about Michael Jackson's thriller, when all this was still going on, it was still like calming down, but it was the first Halloween since leaving Neverland. And they go, how do you explain to children about Michael Jackson? I go, kids don't care. No kid knows anything about that. They have no idea. And you want proof of it? Go to the internet, be on YouTube right now, and go to Kids React. Go to the Kids React channel, Kids React about, Kids React to Michael Jackson. Go to that channel and you could watch. They play Michael Jackson videos for kids. They ask the kids, Something about did you ever did you hear anything weird or wrong about Michael Jackson? And there's kids that have like nine, eight, nine years old. They go, no. One of them that was a little older said that they heard something about it, but that was it. Kids don't care, nor would they know about it. So it was absurd to think that a seven, an eight, or nine-year-old would have any kind of feeling like that. It's obviously a made-up story that an adult is making up, a.k.a. James Savechuck, Wade Robson. It's obvious. So now getting back to what this Dan Reed's trying to do. Now this is according to Deadline. 
They say that Reed has been filming in the Los Angeles Superior Court as Wade Robson and James Savechuck, the two men at the center of Leaving Neverland, pursue separate claims against MJJ Productions and MJJ Ventures after alleging that they were sexually assaulted by the King of Pop when they were minors. Reed's footage will be used in a follow-up film for Channel 4, that's Channel 4 in the UK, in which he captures the legal wars but waged between Robson and Savechuck or say waged by Robson and Save Chuck after their emotional leaving Neverland interviews lit a fire under concerns that Jackson was a predator. What are you talking about? Raise concerns? By who? You're the ones that are going to court. You're the ones that are doing this so you can elevate your court case to get sympathy from the public of these wild nonsense lies that you told in Leaving Neverland to get sympathy and support from people to go, oh my God, could you imagine these things are so horrible? Oh my God, they're, they're scarred for life. It didn't happen. That's all it was. It's you two. It's you two. That raised concerns. Nobody's raising concerns. There's no investigation into anything. Michael Jackson's dead. If Michael Jackson was still alive, right, and this came out, what do you think would happen? Oh, maybe there'd be an investigation. There probably would be an investigation. Notice, didn't happen when Michael Jackson was alive. When Michael Jackson was alive, Wade, you were on the stand saying, Nothing happened. Repeatedly said, nothing happened. Now the guy's dead. Now all of a sudden you're suing because he sexually assaulted you. After you claimed for years, nothing happened. Now you want us to believe you lied the whole time. So no one's raising concerns but you. Because if Michael Jackson was still alive, they'd investigate and you'd want to see him go to jail. But because he's not alive, he's dead. So the only thing that you could do, money, try to get the money from the Michael Jackson estate and his companies. And it's all about the money. And what the haters never understand is Michael Jackson had a massive target on his back for people trying to extort money from him. What the haters don't understand is that these rags, these newspapers, magazines, rags that they are, would pay anybody anything just to say something bad about Michael Jackson. Doesn't have to be true. Doesn't matter. All you have to do is stick the word alleged in front of it. So-and-so says that Michael Jackson allegedly stuck his hand down a kid's pants. Alleged. People don't read that alleged means that this person's making the accusation. Doesn't mean it's true. Doesn't mean it's false. Just it's alleged. It's an accusation. People don't read the word alleged. They just go, Michael Jackson stuck his hand down a kid's pants. No, allegedly. You have to prove that happened. But the magazine, all they got, all they got to do is print what somebody else told them. So if they ever get sued by the person, they go, well, this, that's what this guy said. He said it happened. I mean, he could have seen it. You can't say what he said, what he saw and didn't see. So as long as it's somebody else said it, we can print it. That's what they did. So when you have somebody who makes no money, who makes, you know, say the average person makes, you know, $800 a week, $1,000 a week, and they go, look, if you say that Michael Jackson stuck his hand down his kid's pants, we'll give you $50,000. And then they go, oh, well, you know, I, I seem to kind of remember something like that. See, see how it works? That's, the haters don't get it. They don't get that Michael Jackson was a target. Nor do they care because they want to believe it. They want to believe the nonsense. Now, Reed's footage 
will be used in a follow-up film for Channel 4 in which he captures the legal wars being waged by Robson and Safechuck after their emotional Leaving Neverland interviews. Now, we said that already. <laughs> Went through that already. Let's move on. Jackson's companies served Reed and his production outfit, Amos Pictures, with subpoenas demanding that he personally appear for deposition and hand over documents and materials related to Leaving Neverland and the sequel. The subpoenas served on September 21st were followed by Jackson's attorneys filing a brief in which they attempt to discredit Reed, persuade the court that he is not a legitimate journalist, and portray Leaving Neverland as one-sided. Well, it is. They are also attempting to ban him from filming in the courtroom. It is one-sided. You have no accounts from anyone else but these two guys and their families. That's it. There's nothing refuting what they say. Nothing. Nobody from the Jackson family, nobody from anybody who worked in Neverland, security guards, people that worked in the house, people that worked in the, in the garden, at the amusement park, security, nobody. I'm sure when Living Neverland was being made, if you would have went to anybody in the Jackson family and said, look, these two are saying this, what do you have to say about it? They would have defended it. They would have said, these guys are nuts. Nothing happened. They're lying. They would have showed when they tried to show these faxes. And look, he was sending faxes. He was calling, calling him doo doo head, all that nonsense. You have Taj Jackson goes, my uncle did that with everyone. That's nothing. He goes, I got hundreds of faxes from my uncle. Taj Jackson, his nephew who was a kid at the time, was there for the sleepovers. Did they ask him? According to Dan Reed, oh, well, they just got, they're just going to deny it. They're just going to deny it, but they weren't there. You know, no, they were there. They did see it. I mean, I've seen pictures for the 3T album cover with their shirts off, and they try to put that off as porn. Michael Jackson shooting porn with kids. They're his nephews. For an album cover. And they called it child porn. Still, the haters don't see what's going on with this. So no, nobody was ever asked from the Jackson family. Now? No, they're not gonna, they're not gonna, they're not gonna be in the, the new documentary. The attorneys say they're not gonna be in the new documentary. Why would they be? Why would they be? It makes no sense. Of course they're not going to be in the new documentary. The attorney says they're not going to be in the new documentary. Reed attached emails showing that he had asked MJJ Productions and MJJ Ventures counsel Howard Weitzman to appear in the second documentary. Following a constructive meeting with Reed in June, Weitzman declined saying, I have resolved that neither myself or anyone in my offices will participate in the documentary. We will all, we all discuss for several reasons. Among them is the fact that you are already clearly on the record saying that you believe both accuser stories without hesitation. Exactly. You didn't talk to him the first time. It was one-sided. Now you want to talk to him? Now because what you're doing now is trying to shoot in the court and you're going to have both sides? So it would look kind of stupid if you did a documentary that only showed what Wade Robson or James Safechuck is saying on their side and not showing what the Jackson Council is saying on their side. It'd be stupid if you have to, when you're showing the Jackson Council and not getting why they said what they said or why they're fighting it. So now, because it's important to your documentary, now you want their opinions. Now you want them to be in it. But when you just had the one sided story making accusation and lies against Michael Jackson, you said the reason or one of the reasons that you didn't get the other side was because it didn't fit your narrative and you didn't want to confuse the viewer. Well, that's what the documentary is supposed to do. The documentary, when it's like a he said, he said, he said, she said, 
when you get two sides to the story, you get each side and you let the viewer decide for themselves who they believe. But that's not what you did, Dan Reed. What you did was put these two idiots on a pedestal, make them out to be sexual abuse survivors, which they are not. They're liars. To get your name out there, dragging Michael Jackson's name and legacy through the mud. That's the only reason. But now that it serves you, to get the other side's perspective, now you want to put them in. And they go, no. And they're right. Why would they be in it? For what purpose now? You should have put them in the first one. They're saying he did this. Other people are saying he didn't. That's getting both sides. You didn't do that. And they want to talk about they're trying to harm your credibility. Your credibility is already shot. You're a hack. You're a hack documentary maker. Because that wasn't a documentary. That was a hit job. It was lies. It was fiction. That's what you made. You made fiction. Because you didn't get both sides of the story. You got one side. And now they think they're all emboldened. They're going to sue. We got them. Well, you don't got them. You don't got them, James. Bye-bye. Wade, you're next. Bye-bye. Thrown right out of court. That's what's going to happen. So I don't blame Howard Weitzman or anybody from the Jackson family to not be in this garbage. Now that it serves Dan Reed. What a weasel this guy is. So obvious what he's trying to do. So obvious. Look at this weasel. Look at him. Weasel. Little weaselly eyes. I mean, just a fact. Look at this picture in a photo shoot. Serious. I mean, just unbelievable that they did this. I can't even believe it. Terrible. Look at this. Look at this guy. Give me a close up of this guy. Look at this. Ugh. Who puts him? A documentary maker takes pictures with the people in the documentary. Like he's doing some big service for everyone. Get out of here. Not doing a service. You did a hit job, man. Now you're making a follow up. More lies, more nonsense. So you could skew it to whatever you want it to be. That's what you're doing, Dan. That goofy look on your face. That's all you're doing. We know now you're going to skew it. And you know what? I understand. The attorneys from Michael Jackson State, they want it all gone. I get it. I get it. Reed's motion to quash was supported by a declaration from Channel 4's head of news and current affairs, Louisa Compton, in a strongly worded defense of the director. She said the Jackson companies were attempting to suppress reporting on the Robson and Safe Chuck cases. You can report on it. They're going to court. They're trying to sue. That's what's being reported. That's it. What, what, What more do you need to be reported? I'm reading it right now in an article. Suppress. That's a suppressing anything. They're not going to take part of your nonsense and your lies. They're not going to do that. Then she, Compton said, understandably, the MJJ companies are not happy with leaving Neverland or the making of the follow-up documentary. Yeah, because it was one-sided and a bunch of lies. It is easy to see why they do not want the subject matter of these films to be reported to the public. However, as much as they may dislike the messages that are being conveyed by these documentaries, we strenuously oppose their efforts to shoot the messenger. Dude, that's, you're not the messenger. You're making up lies. You gave these two idiots a platform to spew nonsense and baloney. Garbage. Pure fabricated lies. And for the public that don't care, the public that don't listen, the public that are here on the fringes of things, the public that want to hate, that want to drag down celebrities. Oh, can you believe Michael Jackson abused these two kids? When they were kids, they abused them. Then he got Oprah legitimizes these two idiots by having that question and answer. Another one that was more fame using Michael Jackson's name. Like Oprah needs any more fame. It's all a lie. 
surprise. Not shooting the messenger. If you made a, if you actually uh, tried to deliver an actual message, you would have delivered both sides of the story the first time. And let people decide for themselves. That's being a messenger. You only delivered one side of the story. Now you're, now you're whining and complaining because the side you didn't go to originally says, we don't want nothing to do with this and we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna go against you now in court. N- now, oh, 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 don't shoot the messenger. Get out of here. What's wrong with you? So stupid. So I'm going to put up this, uh, the Michael Jackson slideshow. Let's see that. There you go. Unbelievable. They act like, oh, don't shoot the messenger. Here's what they also say. In particular, we at Channel 4 oppose their efforts to use subpoenas to try to force Reed and his company to turn over all of their unpublished materials and drag this journalist, journalist, he's no journalist, into depositions. In the UK, as in the United States, the courts are very reluctant to order journalists to hand over unbroadcast and other journalist material, given the strong legal protections that exist to protect freedom of expression. Well, that I understand. You know, they're trying to stop them from shooting in the court, and they're trying to get them to hand over the materials. That probably isn't going to happen. And I don't really have much of a problem with that, because there is a, there's a line, man. There's a line when it comes to reporting and and they're shooting video. And if it's at the court, they can't stop them. They can't stop them from shooting anything. They can't stop them from putting anything out. They can't stop them from from lying. They they, they just can't do it. Because they're claiming something that a dead guy did and there's nobody else really besides the dead guy that actually knows what went on. Now, we could use deductive reasoning and and common sense that nothing went on. But the fact is that Michael Jackson's dead. We know nothing happened. I know nothing happened. You know nothing happened. But there are people out there that they won't let it go, man. They won't let it go. There's people out there that still, to this day, believe Michael Jackson was a pedophile. They used the evidence that showed he was not guilty in the trial to say that he was guilty. I mean, it's so insane. Go look at the comments on my videos. You'll see the insanity that these people perpetuate. It's ridiculous. So now they're trying to, they're saying they don't want him to hand over the broadcast materials. They're talking about there's a hearing on Reed's motion to quash the subpoenas is scheduled to take place on April 9th of next year. L.A. County Superior Court Judge Mark A. Young dismissed Safe Chuck lawsuit. Yeah, we went over that already. Deadline understands HBO is not yet attached to the second Leaving Neverland film. That's because they're in their own lawsuit with the Michael Jackson estate because of the clause, uh, the breach of contract, I should say, that the Michael Jackson state is claiming HBO. It did. Remember that they had the contract for the dangerous concert that they aired back in 92. And they're saying that in that contract, they're not supposed to say anything bad about Michael Jackson. Then they had Neverland and they're being sued about it saying, look, the contract might be at the time. Well, now it's 28 years old, but it was 27 years old. Doesn't mean it's still not in effect. So HBO most likely is not going to be attached to another sequel, a sequel to Leaving Neverland, if there is one. Uh, it'll go somewhere else. It'll go to, you know, a streaming service or one of the other cable channels. I mean, someone's going to pick it up. That's for sure. Because they don't care if it's not true. They don't care if it's nonsense. They only care about ratings and making money. That's all they care about. And that's the sad part. That's the saddest thing around this whole thing is it's all about making money off the back of Michael Jackson. And, and it's, it's just so terrible. The guy did so much for humanity, so much for children in terms of what he was giving back to them with Neverland, the charities he supported, 
the causes he supported. And this is what they treat him like. But we know the truth. I know the truth. I, I, I know they didn't do anything to any of these, to anyone. But it's so sad that this guy, Dan Reed, trying to make money with a sequel. Because I know that the, these lawsuits, they're going to go nowhere. Nowhere. And guess what, Wade? Guess what, James? You're still going to be broke. You're still going to be broke and whining. And the saddest part of the whole thing, the saddest part, and let me just say this so no one misunderstands anything that I've said. I'm talking about these two, all right? I don't believe them. They're liars. I don't believe they were sexually assaulted. That doesn't mean that I don't believe people when they say they were sexually assaulted. I just don't believe these two idiots because it doesn't line up right. But of course, people that were sexually assaulted need to be taken seriously and any claims need to be investigated. And the problem is what James and, and more, I should say, Dan Reed did is now he's taking away from real sexual assault survivors, real people that were abused sexually by monsters. Those are the people that get even more affected by something like this. By trying to put it out there. And that's why I said, why do you tell their stories, Dan, you're so worried about sexual assault survivors. Why aren't you telling anybody else's story besides these two and Michael Jackson? If it's all about sexual assault survivors, like you said, why aren't you telling anybody else's story? If it's not about fame, not about money. And I'm not talking because you, whether you paid them or you didn't pay them, it doesn't even matter. How much notoriety did you get? You won an award for this garbage. Now everybody knows your name, Dan Reed. The guy who made the Leaving Neverland, the Michael Jackson documentary. Dan Reed, he's good. No, it's not good. But the people don't look at that. They look at the po popularity. That's what they look at, that they know your name. So now if he makes another documentary about something else, they'll go, the award-winning director of Leaving Neverland, Dan Reed, presents, and it's going to be some other garbage because nobody cared about anything he did before this. So like I said, using the name of Michael Jackson to get ahead. Doesn't matter that he's dragging Michael Jackson's name through the mud. Doesn't matter that he's dragging his legacy through the mud. Doesn't matter. He doesn't care. Because if he cared and wanted to make a true documentary, he would have gone to Michael Jackson's family. He would have attempted to talk to people that were around that time period to refute the claims made by Wade Robson and James Safechuck. He never did that. That's what a real documentarian would have done. Would have went in and found people to refute their claims would have dug deep to dismiss what they're saying. Never did any of that. Didn't do any of it. Just had these two liars lying. And it's disgusting. You know, I was thinking about this, um, you know, it was just a couple of weeks ago that uh, Eddie Van Halen died. And uh, I wanted to talk about that a little bit too, actually. Now that I'm done with Dan Reed, fuck him. That's what I say. And Wade and James, fuck him. But I wanted to talk about Eddie Van Halen and uh, we all know Eddie Van Halen played the solo on Beat It. Everybody knew it was Eddie Van Halen at the time because it sounded just like him. Um, I remember when it came out, even though he wasn't in the video, he's uncredited. Uh, there is film. Uh, there's a video that was shot, I believe, in Houston on, during the Victory Tour when Eddie came out 
and played uh, with the Jacksons and played with Michael. Uh, and I actually do have some pictures of that, actually. Let's find those pictures. Let's find those pictures of Michael and Eddie. I got a bunch of them. Let me show you. You're, you're going to like these pictures. They're, they're really cool of Eddie and Michael. Um, so here's a picture. Here's a, here's one. So there's Eddie and Michael hanging out. looks like they're in a studio or something, just hanging. Maybe that was the day when he did the solo. So what they actually did, what actually happened was Quincy Jones called Pete Townsend from The Who. They wanted him to do the solo. And for whatever reason, Pete said he wasn't available. And he suggested Eddie Van Halen. And Quincy called Eddie Van Halen. Eddie Van Halen didn't even believe it was Quincy Jones hung up on him. And Quincy called him back and he said, no, it's Quincy Jones. And, uh, you know, I'm doing this song with Michael Jackson and we need a guitar solo. You, you don't want to do it. So Eddie was like, yeah, okay. So Eddie goes into the studio and he lays down these two solos. And then he goes in and he rearranges the song. So Eddie did a little bit more than just solos. He actually rearranged the song. And then after he did it all, remember, Michael doesn't know any of this. Then Michael comes in. So maybe this is this picture here is after Michael came in. And then uh, Eddie goes, uh, listen, he was going to do one of two things. He was going to thank me or he was going to throw me out. So he said, I don't know if you're going to like this, but I rearranged a song and, and here it is. So he plays it for Michael. He plays the song. And Michael actually realized how good he made the song. And he thanked them. He said, thank you so much, not just for doing a blazing solo, but for caring so much about the song to rearrange it in the way you did, because I love it. How about that? Yeah, remember, this is in like, what, 1982. So Van Halen already had a huge following in the rock world. They were not the commercially successful Van Halen that came after Jump. You know, the album was 1984. And Jump and Panama and Half a Teacher all came from that album. Everybody knows Jump. I mean, everybody knows Jump. Not a lot of people, I should say, people that were into rock and hard rock, or at the time we called it heavy metal, knew of Van Halen. But after Jump, like everybody knew of Van Halen. So you have these pictures of Michael and Eddie. So I got a couple of more for you that you might like. Um, so you have this one. Then you have, now here's one. You like this one. Oh, there they are on stage. There's Michael and Eddie. There's Tito. And Eddie was playing guitar for Beat It. It's a great shot. And then I got some more. Let's see. Uh, we got this picture. Let me see. I got some more here. E -e -e. Oh, here's a good one. I like this one. This is a cool picture here. Here's another one of Michael looking at Eddie while he's blazing the solo. That's a cool one. And then you have, so here's the first picture. I want to, well, actually, I want to play you the, I'll show you the finished picture first. So the finished picture is this one. Uh, hold on. Let me get this out. So here's the picture backstage. You got Eddie and Michael backstage chilling, looking cool with their glasses, right? Now, I'm going to say this next picture actually was before that picture. And that, of course, is this. Let me uh, pull it up here. <laughs> There's Michael fixing Eddie's glasses, making sure Eddie was cool. Hey, to make sure Eddie looked good. Nothing wrong with that. Fixing his glasses. Had to make sure Eddie was looking good. Teddy Van Halen. So this is a great shot of uh, Eddie and Michael on stage together. Rest in peace, Edward Van Halen. Rest in peace, Michael Jackson. I'm sure they're doing, uh, Eddie's doing a solo for Beat It right now. 
in heaven. They're hanging out, making music because they were both absolute geniuses, the two of them. So here's this cool picture I got of Eddie that I uh, had posted on social media when Eddie died. And there it is. Oh, that's one of the best pictures. That's a picture of Eddie, but they made it into like a painting. With the cigarette hanging out of his mouth, with the cool guitar and the overalls. And Look, it's, it's amazing to me that all these people that I looked up to growing up are all dying. And they're dying at early ages. I mean, Eddie was 65. 65 is not exactly young. But look, I mean, he could have lived another, you know, somebody dies at 85, you go, I oh, lived a long life. 65, you go, oh, yeah, you had more time. Now, obviously, Michael died at 50, way too young. Same thing with Whitney Houston, same thing with Prince. It's amazing that, like, top, the top, like, the top five artists of the 80s, that four of them are gone. I have the top five, I will say, artists of the 80s. Four of them are dead. That would be Michael Jackson, Prince, Whitney Houston, and George Michael. The only one left is Madonna. To me, that was, those were the top five biggest artists of the 80s. And it's crazy that only, what, 35, 40, 30 years later, I mean... 1980 was 40 years ago. So 1985 was Michael, Prince, Madonna were at their height in 1985. Whitney came around that time. She first started. 85 is when her album kind of hit. And then, of course, George Michael... Actually, George Michael already was a star. I mean, Wham! was 1984, but as a solo artist, it wasn't until 1987 when George Michael was by himself as a solo artist. But he was still big in 84 when the first Wham! record, Wake Me Up Before You Go-Go. So I was thinking about that. So yeah, rest in peace to Eddie Van Halen, Michael Jackson. Actually, all, rest in peace to all of them. To Michael Jackson, Eddie Van Halen, Prince, Whitney Houston, George Michael. Rest in peace to all of you. I hope they're all making music and looking down on us and uh, praying for us. Praying for our world. Praying for this COVID goes away. We got an election coming up in a week from now. We'll see what happens with that. So uh, I wanted to talk to you about these things. I think some people were looking for me to make a video. Here it is. Not to toot my own horn or anything, because believe me, I know a lot of people aren't looking for me to make a video. But I hope you liked it. By the way, like and subscribe to the channel because I got more coming up. Oh, my big announcement. Before I almost forgot. So it was a year ago. You look at the date of, my, of the video I did. I think with the big thriller thumbnail. That was... Um, October 27th, I believe, 2019. And I put out the, what I called the Michael Jackson challenge for the haters that wanted to talk about how Michael Jackson's a pedophile and all that nonsense in the comments. And I said, I'm not doing it anymore in comments. I will do a live show when my channel reaches a thousand subscribers. That was the Michael Jackson challenge. And then I disappeared and I didn't do it. And I had a very good reason that I didn't do it. I'm not going to get into it, but there was a reason that it didn't happen. So let me know in the comments below if you want that to happen. I said I would do a live show. Anybody could call in and we could debate about Michael Jackson. Anything you want about the trials, about leaving Neverland, about anything. And also if you want to call in, because you love Michael Jackson, he inspired you, you love the videos, you love the music, you want to talk about that, I'll talk about that. It's open for anybody to call in. So let me know in the comments if you want that to happen. And I still can make it happen. The same caveat still exists. Thousand subscribers. And the reason is, 
we want to have an audience. I, if I do it, I want people to see it live. I want people to hear it. Though it will be recorded, but I want people to call in. I can't do that when there's no audience. So it would be the same thing. If the channel hits a thousand subscribers, I'm already like halfway there. Thousand's not exactly a big number. So like and subscribe to the video, to this video. I say like the video, subscribe to the channel. We hit the thousand, I'll set it up. And I'll, I'll post another video with a date and a time so everybody can know it, know when it's going to happen. And you can be there for it. And you can participate. Now, the other announcement that I had is this. I see all these videos all the time. These young kids doing reaction videos of seeing or hearing, like they hear Led Zeppelin for the first time. They hear Leonard Skinner for the first time. They do these reaction videos. And I've seen a couple thriller reaction videos. The first time they ever watched or saw Michael Jackson's thriller. So I've decided that I am going to do a reaction to Michael Jackson's thriller. And you say, wait a minute. You've seen Michael Jackson's thriller. Well, actually, no, I'm just kidding. I, of course I've seen it. I've seen it a thousand times. I own it. But here's the difference between watching these kids react that never saw it before and watching me react. Because they can't capture the essence of what it was like the first time you saw Michael Jackson's thriller when Michael Jackson was at his height and his peak. Now you see it. Listen, every artist out there does a song and a video with dancers and choreography. That wasn't going on when Michael Jackson's thriller came out. That was just starting to happen. And Michael Jackson led that. So they don't know the essence that I know. And I will be able to make you feel that when I react to Thriller. They don't know what it was like to have to wait for the video to come on. Like I did. We had to wait. We had to wait for MTV to play it. They played it a lot in the first week, but we still had to wait for it. They don't know that. And what went into the making, if you watch the making of Michael Jackson Thriller, it was the most expensive video made at the time. It was a real film director of horror movies. John Landis directed American World from London. A bunch of other movies. But people don't know. I mean, he directed Animal House too. But people don't know that. So I can give you the essence. So I'm going to do that. Maybe I'll do it like this week. Before Halloween. Halloween's on Saturday. So maybe I'll do it on Friday. Post that up. Comment if you want to see that. If you want to see me do a reaction video, comment. I'll play the video. I'll talk about it. I'll, like I said, I will give you the essence of what it was like to see for the first time. Not seeing it 40 years later or whatever it is, 37 years later. I was there when it first came out. I remember distinctly how it was, what it was like to see it for the first time. So I'll go through all of that. So that'll be coming up soon. So uh, like and subscribe and we're going to do that. We will do that. Everybody enjoy the rest of your day, the rest of your evening. And I will catch you on the next video.